We know that in there is perhaps if we can control some risk factors, we can reduce metritis. What are examples of some risk factors that can lead to metritis? Uh, so I think classically it would be some uh, cabin-related uh, uh, cabin problems such as dystocia, uh, stillbirth parturitions. Uh, cows that give birth to male calves are also more likely to develop uterine diseases. Uh, hygiene, hygiene in the maternity pan and even like how the perineal region of the cow looks like also is a risk factor. So the dirtier the cow is, the more likely uh, she is to develop metritis. Uh, but also uh, factors that lead to uh, poor immunity uh, in the postpartum period is also risk factors of uh, metritis. So we have uh, metabolic imbalances or mineral imbalances that can lead to uh, uh, imbalance immunity uh, that can make the cow more susceptible to those bacterial infections. And um, one associated disease with metritis and perhaps also with these metabolic diseases, especially hypocalcemia, is retained placenta, which is a risk factor for metritis. Why are these two events associated retained placenta and metritis? Yeah, so retained placenta is a generally uh, the cow is going to have retained placenta. Uh, she has poorer immunity, so she's going to, because the final mediation of separation of the placentomes is going to be mediated by neutrophils, which are immune cells of cows. So neutrophils are going to come from the bloodstream into the uh, placentomes, which is going to mediate that separation. So neutrophils are very important. So that's the first link. And I think the second link too is that just that hanging placenta might be a pathway of bacteria to go through the birth canal from the environment into the uterus of cows, which can increase the risk of cows to get metritis as well. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the impacts of this, this disease? What is the economic impact of the case of metritis roughly? I know this varies from study to study, but just to provide some estimate, how mm -hmm. much can it cost? Yeah, so generally, there are several costs associated with metritis. I think the first one would be uh, the cost of the treatment because it's caused by a mixed bacterial infection. Uh, the cost of uh, the treatment is antibiotics, right? So cows are treated with antimicrobial drugs that can uh, generally septiofur, which uh, might be one of the most used drugs for uh, metritis. The cost might be anywhere between 60 to $90, depending on the size of the cow, of course and the dose that you need to use. Uh, but there's some research that ampicillin, which uh, is also a very good drug to treat metritis. However, there's a caveat there is that uh, septiofur, uh, the, you, the, when you treat a cow, there's no milk withhold associated with it, while with uh, ampicillin, there's a milk withhold. So uh, the cost of the treatment, it's virtually the same because you, need, you are not able to sell uh, the milk for about like I think seven days if you treat the cow with uh, uh, with ampicillin uh, but also once the cow develops metritis regardless if you treat the cow or not you're gonna have some losses associated with milk production so especially in the first two months of lactation the cow that gets metritis are go you're gonna uh, the cows are going to experience some losses in milk production uh, cows are going to be have uh, poor reproductive performance too, compared to cows that don't develop metritis, uh, and that can lead to uh, higher cooling rates. At the end of the day, I think uh, the last information that we have, the, each case of metritis might cost around like $400. Uh, okay. uh, metritis is uh, pretty prevalent, so anywhere from 10 to even 30% of cows, so when you add up, it's a very high cost for the producer. And in this variation that, that we see with metritis, um, at least part of that variation, uh, perhaps it could be explained uh, by some dairies having less metritis than other ones, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think there's potential benefit to control these risk factors and try to keep metritis prevalence or incidence as low as possible to reduce um, the use or the need to use antibiotics? Absolutely. I think uh, 
uh, all of those things that we said before, like a uh, good transition period through uh, good nutrition, but also providing the cows a stress-free environment, a clean maternity pen. I think all of those are very important to reduce metritis. By my own personal experience is that a lot of these dairies that when you look at their records, they have a low metritis incidence. You gotta be careful too, because you have to look at how the farm workers are uh, diagnosing metritis. Are they very uh, aggressive in the treatment that once they uh, find a, something that maybe is metritis, they go and treat, maybe like differences in protocols for diagnosis of metritis might be uh, something that is contributing to this variation, but also how aggressive they are in monitoring those cows. So usually on our research projects that we try to catch as many metritis cases as possible and be very consistent, uh, we diagnose or we monitor cows at four, seven, and, ten, and then 10 days in milk. Uh, we use this tool here that is called the metric check that we introduce in the vaginal uh, canal of the, uh, of the cow and exteriorize the vaginal contents and then we can tell if the cow has metritis or not. So we can be very consistent and virtually, as we said, like in the first 10 days in milk, we can catch 80% uh, of cows. And then every cow that the producer thinks has metritis past that day, like so let's say after uh, 10 days in milk, we also monitor those cows when we look at cows that drop milk production too from one day to the other. So farmers or uh, farms that their employees don't monitor cows very closely. Of course, they're not looking for the disease, so the disease incidence uh, can be pretty low too, but it, that might be just an artifact on how often the cows are being looked at.